and welcome back to part two of the top ten worst exotics in Destiny 2. The first part has had a lot of, well, informed discussion, shall we say, but it's great to see so many people following on with comments and likes and so on. That's what makes this great. And don't forget, if you are enjoying the list, drop me a subscribe. That will be very welcome. So let's carry on counting down from numbers five to number one. So let's start with Cold Heart. Bit of a giveaway, but this is the only trace rifle on our list. Now, not surprising, really. There's only four of them all together. Don't forget that wave splitter that you've never used. The Cold Heart has the distinction of being the first ever trace rifle in Destiny 2. And that's it. That's all it's got going for it, really. I mean, it's very pretty. It hits harder the longer you shoot the target with it. And, uh, well, it was so kind of nondescript that when I was thinking back to it, I actually thought that it was a legendary off the top of my head. But then I went in and went, lo and behold, it was a blimmin' exotic. So it's not really that exciting. It's pretty unspectacular. Now, I think it gets away with it being an exotic because it does hold the honor of being the first ever trace rifle and it made you go, ooh, when you shot it for a bit. But then once that novelty wore off, then uh, Better Exotics pushed it out and it never really came back. In fact, there's only two times that Trace Rifles have ever really had a look in. There was the Prometheus Lens when we had that time, remember, when it would burn everyone's faces off and they even made an emblem for it called the Prismatic Inferno, if you survived that. And then, of course, we've got the glorious, and I mean glorious, Ruinous Effigy, which has been one of the most innovative, innovative I can't say innovative, and fun guns to come to the game in a while. Now, it's got some pretty ornaments, but it does say a lot that during this gun's bit in the top 10 countdown, I spent most of my time talking about two others. Number four, the Rat King. This was all the rage back in the day. First of all, it's an exotic primary sidearm, and it has a nifty little spell of invisibility if you reload after a kill, and that lasts for about four seconds. And it's pretty forgiving on when it activates, so that's pretty cool, and its other main perk is the Rat Pack. Now, that means that damage is increased if it's used with other people waggling their Rat Kings around, and that stacks up to six times. So this gun, I reckon, was made with raid teams in mind. Now, I know this this may be a crime, but I don't usually raid that much, like a lot of the Destiny player base, so that doesn't really come into play for me. Now, matching with randoms and using a Rat King, well, it's pointless because it's so rare to find people who are willing to change to that gun because they have to go rummaging through their cupboard for it. So by the time they've sorted themselves out, the activity is finished and I'm already back at the tower at the ramen store, drinking myself blind from the undercounter hooch that they have secreted there. I recommend you try it, it's very good. Now it looks quite nice, the gun itself. It's got sculptured vermin running around the barrel, but the ornament, never guess what the ornament does. No, you're gonna be incredibly surprised, but the ornament turns it black. That's never been seen before. I don't know how they come up with them. Now it is rather drab to use, apart from the invisibility thing, which is quite a cool little thing, but uh, the invisibility is only saving my ass because the gun wasn't powerful enough on its own to kill the people in front of me quick enough. So it sort of cured its own problem, if you know what I mean. But when it comes down to it, it's because it only comes into its own when you're playing with five others. And in the world of Destiny, I know that happens a lot in raids, but out in the world, it doesn't happen that much at all. <laughs> oh, I still miss him so much. Number three, Cerberus plus one. Here we are in the top three and it doesn't bode very well that I haven't got much to say about this next one. The Cerberus Plus one. It's pretty cool looking. Loads of barrels strapped together willy-nilly. It looks like something that's been dragged arse backwards through the river in the Irishman, you know, where they always chuck all their guns. Well, anyway, it looks pretty cool, but it damages things all over the shop. When you look down the sights, it tightens it a little bit. It's got the four barrels shooting off everywhere, but it just doesn't work very well. Or at all, really. I mean, I picked it up to make this video, and now I'm putting it down again. Probably forever. And that's it. So all I've got to say about the Cerberus. It's very, very dull. You could have a bit of fun running into a group of thrall and just letting the bullets spew out everywhere. But you've got so many other guns that can do that, so I don't know why you'd use this one. Oh, oh, hang on, look! The ornament isn't just painted black, it's got some other colours too. Great! Number, Number two, two, the Polaris, Polaris Lance. Lance. 
it was a close run thing between number one and number two. Now obviously, this one is a number two. It's the Polaris Lance, as you just saw. And I must admit that when I put my choices out there for people to vote on, I didn't expect the Polaris Lance to be so unpopular. I was really surprised. The gun itself is pretty neat. It's got lots of graphical flair, particularly in what could be considered the best looking gun ornaments out there. It's definitely up there with a hard light. It totally changes the look of the gun in some instances. I mean, look at that one. It's so retro. Flash Gordon gorgeous and it looks like it's been stolen off Buster Crab when he was kipping. Ask your grandparents if you don't know who Buster Crab is. Its exotic perk is a nice solar explosion on the fifth precision kill in the row, hence the name The Perfect Fifth. Now you can tell when you're just about to let go on the fifth one because four little lights appear around the sights to let you know that it's active. So it's got lots of good things going for it. So why has it been so unpopular? Well, I think it's two things. Firstly, it's pretty old in Destiny 2 gaming terms. It came out with the Warbine campaign back in 1586. And it's a scout rifle, which they're not really that much fun. Although the symmetry has got so many gadgets on it, it's more of a Swiss Army knife than a scout rifle. But still, it's kind of a dry weapon class at the moment. But I think the main reason why it's not lock locked, looked on fondly, is the fact that the catalyst was bugged for nearly 400 years. I think it was like from 2018 and uh, right the way up until 2020 was when it actually got fixed. And the bug meant that you couldn't complete it because the perfect fifth explosions just weren't registering and that was a right pain in the ass and it drove me around the bend as well so much so that loads of people thought bollocks to this and chucked it in their cupboards and never use it again and it's left a pretty bad taste in the mouth which is why i think it's gotten so many 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 votes i was still surprised though anyway let's move on now to the number one worst exotic in Destiny 2, as voted for by the delicious Time Sausages Gaming Channel community. And it is... Number, number one, 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 top of top the plops, plops, the stir. Again, this was a surprise in lots of ways for me. I mean, I stuck it on the list because I never bloody use it, but I thought the stern would kind of make a midpoint in the list, you know, wouldn't be considered the worst. I do have some fond men memories of it. Mendsbury's, they sound like berries that exist in the mind. It's got some lovely looking ornaments and it does look smashing when it's all dressed up and coupled with a sidearm drang it is quite frankly very strong indeed. But you see that's its weakness. In order to get the overcharged shots that deal like four times the damage you need to make kills with drang. Now, Drang itself is an excellent little sidearm, and each kill with Drang adds an overload shot to Sturm's magazine, a total of 12, I think, which gets you to the mag limit, and then you get into a rhythm, killing with Drang, killing with Sturm, killing with Drang, killing with Sturm, and it's worth noting that they also reload each other, so you can get into a deadly cadence. But, and this is another large but, or ass. this is a bad thing because A, it's in effect takes up to two of your weapon slots. A far too high price to pay, in my opinion, especially with uh, all these new lovely weapons flying around these days. You seem to end up using Drang more often than you use Sturm, which kind of makes it a bit silly, really. Plus, the advantages you get with the Overlord shot paid in comparison to the Wither Horde or the Ruinous Effigy. I know that's a special in the secondary slot, but you know what I mean. Even worse, on its own, Sturm is slow, ponderous, and if you have it equipped, you'll fall asleep, as it's so boring to use. Bang! Ten minutes, pause. Bang! Ten minutes, pause. This is not really a very good look. The Sturm is also older than me, which is bloody ancient. It's been around since the Red War. That's 2017, so people have just forgotten about it as well, I suppose. It does have a catalyst, but it doesn't do much except 
bring a bit more range and handling, which isn't very exciting. A catalyst should be an exciting thing. It should, I think, have reduced its dependency on the drang by replacing it with melee hits to load in the overcharge round or something like that. But then what have been a complete waste of time and totally negated it being called the Sturm and the Drang. As the whole point of this exotic is that it's paired with the Drang. It's historical stablemate. So maybe, yes, it does belong at the top. But only because it can't stand on its own two feet as an exotic. Oh yes, and uh, another redeeming feature of it is while I was writing the script for this, yes, amazingly, there is a script, I kept on writing the word strum instead of strang. Strang? Sturm! <laughs> yeah, well, make of that what you will. And that's it. That is the top ten of the worst exotic weapons in Destiny 2, according to me and some of my community chums. Thanks very much for participating in the poll. It was fantastic. And if you enjoyed the video, a like would be really good. A subscribe would be great so you can join in in the future with any more of these types of videos and you can stick your oar in and get your voice heard. Right, that's it. I'm off to go for a strum. I mean, for Sturm. Yes, Sturm. That's it. Goodbye.